Leader of the Third Party. Uh, thank you, Honourable Speaker. Property tax revenue is expected to grow by an average of 5.2% annually. And according to the budget and fiscal framework, this projection, projection is in line with inflation. It's true that inflation is a problem. According to StatsCan, inflation is the highest it's been since 1991. But those numbers fall short of the grossly inflated prices of housing in BC. BC assessment data released last month showed that housing prices jumped enormously across the province. Some communities saw the average home value increase by 40%. And when homes jump in value, their owners pay more in property taxes and government benefits from the increased revenues. This government says it cares about the housing crisis, but it is hooked on the funds from the runaway housing market that's leaving so many British Columbians struggling to pay rent, much less be able to get into a home of their own. Through you, Honourable Speaker, to the Minister of Finance, how does this government reconcile the promise to fix the housing crisis with the ongoing reliance on the tax revenue that the crisis generates? Minister of Finance. Thank you, and I want to thank the member for, for the question. Uh, the housing uh, crisis uh, has, has been with us for some time. We were making some headway before the pandemic, Mr. Speaker. We were seeing some moderation, uh, and that uh, certainly suggested that we were moving in the right direction with our 30-point plan. We know the speculation and vacancy tax uh, certainly made a difference. Uh, not only did it uh, um, tamper down speculation, but it also turned 18,000 empty uh, units into homes for, for British Columbians. Uh, and I appreciate uh, the member's question. We're continuing to spend uh, $1.2 billion every year to build the kind of housing that British Columbians need. Uh, and in fact, in this budget, we accelerated the Community Housing Fund by $100 million to continue uh, on, that, uh, on that path to continue to deliver uh, housing for British Columbians that they can afford. Leader of third party, supplemental. Thank you, Honourable Speaker, and, and while I recognize the government has been trying to address the housing crisis, I think British Columbians can acknowledge and see that for many, many people, the crisis is getting worse. But our reliance on problematic <coughs> revenue sources isn't just limited to housing. It also extends to the other crisis we're experiencing, which is climate change. On page 59 of the budget, it states that revenues from natural gas royalties will decrease because of declining gas prices, but these decreases will be offset by increased production volumes. So let's be clear, this government's so-called climate budget is predicated on increasing the volume of methane and carbon emissions from fracking in British Columbia after the climate disasters we endured last year. It is business as usual from this government through you, Honourable Speaker, to the Minister of Energy and Mines. How does he reconcile this government's promise of climate action with their ongoing expansion of publicly funded support for fracking? Minister of Energy and Mines. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate the question from the member. What we have engaged in is uh, a royalty review. Uh, it was initiated uh, with a report uh, written by Dr. Jennifer Winter of the University of Calgary, Dr. Nancy Olaweiler of the University of Simon Fraser. Uh, they, they set forward uh, a series of conclusions. There's been a public consultation process, and uh, we've made it very clear that we are uh, going to eliminate outdated, inefficient fossil fuel subsidies. And that report has, uh, we we're in, in process. We will be making an announcement in very fairly soon, I hope. And uh, uh, I invite the member to await that announcement. 